So the, the, the problem, and the real problem that we have, of course, is now that the bubble has burst, you know, first in the stock market, now the real estate market, and now that we're having this massive recession, which is just getting started, I and mean, we've barely gotten a taste of it. But unfortunately, all the blame is on the free market. All the blame is on capitalism. It's because there wasn't enough regulation. There was too much greed, right? And, you know, Alan Greenspan, or not Alan Greenspan, uh, uh, President Bush, in one of, his, one of his speeches, said that Wall Street got drunk. And he was right. They were drunk. So was Main Street. The whole country was drunk. But what he doesn't point out is where they get the alcohol. <laughs> why, why were they drunk? You know, obviously, Greenspan poured the alcohol. The Fed got everybody drunk. And the government helped out with their moral hazards and the tax codes and all the, the incentives and disincentives they put in, all the various ways that they interfered with the free market and removed the, the necessary balances that would have existed, that would have kept all this from happening. I mean, we've always had greedy people. Everybody has been greedy, not just Wall Street. But all of a sudden, everybody was greedy all at the same time. I mean, can't they understand that there's a trigger for this? There's a reason that everybody acted this way? I mean, normally, when people are greedy, they also have, they're also fearful of loss. And people's fear of loss overcomes their greed and, and, and checks their behavior. But what the government did repeatedly was try to remove the fear. They tried to make speculating as riskless as possible. First, they provided us with almost you know, costless money with which to speculate. And then they created the, the idea or the, you know, the, the Greenspan put, but whenever there's a problem, don't worry, the government is going to rescue you. The government's not going to let the stock market go down. The government's not going to let your bets go bad. So go ahead and keep placing them. That was the idea. That was the mentality. It was nothing that the free market did. In fact, the only entities that needed more regulations were the ones that the government created. I mean, Freddie and, Freddie and Fannie. I mean, if Freddie and Fannie didn't have a government guarantee, they wouldn't have needed any regulation because the market would have regulated them. Right? People would have looked at their balance sheet and said, hey, you don't have any capital. You can't guarantee these mortgages. Who are you kidding? Right? And they never could have expanded the way they did. It was only because the government stood behind them that people didn't care. People said, oh, the government will never let Fannie and Freddie go bankrupt. And they were right. They didn't. Right? That was a question. We didn't know. When I wrote Crash Proof and I said they're going to go bankrupt, I didn't know the answer to that question. I said, we don't know. Is the government going to let them fail or is the government going to stand behind him. And I knew the worst thing was that they, that they stood behind him. It would have been much better had George Bush said, you know what? We had no guarantee. We told you. In fact, on the prospectuses, when you bought the securities, on the front page, it said these securities are not guaranteed by the U.S. government. So the U.S. government could have said, you know, we told you we didn't guarantee them. And we don't. Now, a lot of people would have been pissed. A lot of people would have lost money, but it would have been better than what we did. Because we didn't make the losses go away, we just postponed them, and we just put them on the backs of American taxpayers, or more, more realistically, holders of U.S. dollars. But, you know, where was I? <laughs> See, I digress like that, and I forget, I forget what I was talking about. But, um, what was I just on? Huh? No, 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 no. No, I was talking about Freddie and Fannie. So, yeah, they, they, so they knew... <laughs> That they, no one cared that their balance sheet was small because the government, ha the government guaranteed it. So the one place that the government needed to regulate was Freddie and Freddie. And that's where they didn't regulate it. In fact, every attempt to regulate them was thwarted by Congress. I mean, they were, Freddie and Fannie gave huge amounts of money to both Democrats and Republicans, anybody that tried to regulate them. But the reason they needed to be regulated was because they operated with the government guarantee. Once you gave them that guarantee, then the government had to regulate them and regulate them heavily because it was government money they were dealing with. It wasn't their own money. It wasn't private money. If they're, for normal lenders, we don't need any government regulation. The government could stay out. But in that circumstance, now, part people could say, well, what about Wall Street? I mean, the subprime. Did, there was a situation where there was no government guarantee. That's true. But Fannie and Freddie were the biggest buyers of subprime mortgages in the country. 
They were helping to legitimize the subprime market. They were big bidders in the subprime market. And, of course, it was Fannie and Freddie and FHA that really gave the impetus to the housing bubble, got it started, got the mentality there, is responsible for that, that way of thinking. I mean, so once the momentum was there, people just jumped along for the ride. And, of course, there were a lot of conflict of interest going on. I mean, obviously, <clears throat> the rating agencies are in bed <clears throat> with, with, the, with the brokers. They're rating these bonds AAA. I mean, they have to know that they can't possibly be, be that secure. But, you know, they're just like the real estate appraisers. The rating agencies want jobs, and they get jobs by coming out with good ratings, just like the appraisers. I mean, it, the appraisers just come and kept, kept appraising houses high because they knew if they didn't appraise them high, they would never get another job. And, again, you know, the, the, whole, the whole reason, when you, once you got to the securitization process, which is a natural uh, occurrence, once you got securitization, once you separate the originator of the mortgage from the risk of the mortgage, you've got the moral hazard. The guy, that, the, the guy that's getting the mortgage done, the mortgage broker, he couldn't care less whether that loan is ever going to get repaid. He just wants to originate it. And since he's the one that hires the appraiser, he just wants to hire an appraiser who will appraise the house high enough to fund the mortgage. That's all he cared about. In the olden days, when the banks were lending out their own capital and they hired the appraiser, they wanted a fair appraisal. They wanted to know if the collateral was any good for the loan because that loan was going to be on their books. But in the securitization industry, so there were a lot of these moral hazards, but a lot of them got started because of government. And they never would have been able to grow to the extent that they did if it wasn't for government. And, of course, one of the very reasons that so many financial institutions are in trouble, so many of the, the major banks in, in this country, and, of course, all of our major banks would already be insolvent. They would already be broke if they hadn't got money from the government and if the Fed hadn't been buying up all these assets. But one of the reasons that no one cared is because of the FDIC insurance program. I mean, nobody in this country cares at all what the banks do with our money once we put it there. Because it's all insured by the government. No one cares. It doesn't matter. People do a lot of research before they buy a plasma TV, but nobody does any research before they put their money in the bank. No one cares like who can care. Because the government has created a moral hazard by guaranteeing the accounts. If the government didn't guarantee bank accounts, then banks would not be doing foolish things with our deposits. Because people would care. Because people would know, gee, if you make loans and they don't get paid back, I'm going to lose my money. So banks would not just compete on how much interest they pay, but they would compete on how safe their balance sheets are. And there would be a lot of people looking out for them because probably individual consumers, before they made a deposit, would want to look for some type of equivalent of a consumer's report where somebody rates banks and follows banks and says, here's the safe banks. Nobody bothers to do that now. Why? Because they're all, no one is any riskier than anybody else because they're all guaranteed by the government. It doesn't matter. But it creates a huge moral hazard when you do that. I mean, the same thing, I mean, look, look what Bernie Madoff was able to pull off, right? I mean, do you think, do you think he could have done that without the SEC, giving him the stamp of approval, or without FINRA? I mean, there's no way that if we didn't have regulators, the private sector wouldn't have ferreted this guy out. There would have been a lot more due diligence if everybody didn't think the government was doing it for us. And, of course, I said, you know, instead of putting Bernie Madoff in jail, we should just make him Secretary of the Treasury. <laughs> because he's got a lot of experience, exactly the kind that we need, in running a Ponzi scheme. <laughs>